Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And support me on Patreon if you like my content, because lately my sub count has been sagging like wrinkly witch boobs. Oh yeah, and I still have merch, I have books, I stream, I've got three channels accessible from the main one where you can look at my animations, my Let's Plays and whatnot, so check those out. This last time, I've gotten a hamster back underwater. The habitats still need a little bit of work, but they're aquarium-worthy. I've been working on three things this month. Uh, first is a super hat project, because I can't just wear a normal hat like a normal person. I've got to do some weird shit with technology, being the way that I am. Uh, the other two things. A silver cooling vest. I really want this done in time for summer. Uh, currently, it uses ice. As the ice melts, it chills the water, and then the solar power pump circulates it through the vest. The ice melts too quickly, so I'm going to replace that with a thermocouple that's going to be battery powered. I'll show you that later in the video. And the third thing is I've done a little bit of work on Megahab to add the electrical umbilical that's going to supply power and data to the habitat. Hamster's back underwater. Those seals are doing a beautiful job. I finally got the gaskets I needed for the tunnel. It's as watertight as I could possibly ask for. Only cost me $46 because they don't sell them separately. They only sell them part as part of a uh, P-trap kit, which I learned today. They searched for them in the catalog. They searched for them on the website. They're not listed separately. There's no part number on the O-ring itself. That's quite a, a steep sum for two round pieces of rubber. I'm thinking I'm going to have to invest in some... Um, Thermo, thermopolymer, thermoplastic elastomer or something. It's, some, it's TPE. I forget what, what exactly the term is. But you can 3D print a rubber-like substance that is suitable for making your own O-rings. And it, it costs about the same for a spool of TPE as it does to just buy those O-rings as part of a TPE, I mean a p-trap kit so I may as well just do that in the future I, I just need a container that I can store them in where they won't the filament won't dry out that was what problem I had last time as you can see both modules are leaking now from the hole penetration where the umbilical comes in uh, I fear that they may never be as watertight as they were before and I may have done all this for nothing it turns out uh, because after installing the heaters, one of them failed almost immediately. And I don't believe that's true. I don't believe the pad failed. I believe what happened is that the wires shorted out at the plug end and I need to reseat them. Which may have been all that was wrong in the first place. So I may have gone through this long ordeal for nothing. Except, I guess, for the experience of re replacing a critical component that requires a lot of surgery on the Habs. I think if I had to do it again in the future, which I will eventually... There will be a faster turnaround time, now that I know what all I need to do, what order to do it in, where to get the parts. Mm. It's just a matter of getting to where I can re reliably either source or print uh, gaskets. So I'm going to take a look at the plug for the left hand modules heater pad, which is the one that failed. Uh, it's comfortably warm in there now. It's just not as warm on the left-hand module. It's plenty warm on the right-hand one. And if both fail, I can always fall back on the immersion heater in the corner there. So I have a way to heat up the water, but that's much more energy intensive. For now, um, a little bit of leakage is not a big deal. It was bleeding air like crazy before I put the seals on the tunnel, and it was still not taking on water. These things are really fault tolerant. As a, as a rule of thumb... Um, all or nearly all the air should be exiting where you plant, where you want it to, where you intend it to exit, which it's doing. If there's any other air leaks, they should be very minimal, and they are. So this is satisfactory for now, but I still need to get more work done on these. Maybe even take the pads out temporarily to have a look at them, reseal the umbilicals. I may actually have covered up the electrodes to one of the two moisture sensors which is not acceptable in the long run I've been ru running this thing in the water for like a week now so I'm quite sure that it's not going to take on water even if it, it sprang way more leaks than it has now 
Because remember, I was running this thing without gaskets, and it was it was doing fine. But uh, it's nice just to have hamsters underwater again for the spectacle. I mean, that's kind of iconic as as part of the pro program project. I just wonder how useful it is. This thing's a lot like the ISS in that it was an achievement to to build it in the first place, but now that it's been operating for a while as a test bed and proof of concept, it has proved the concept. I have learned, I think, everything that I can from it. And the money spent keeping this thing operational would be better directed towards the future of the project, which is to buy an above-ground pool kit so I have a sufficiently large body of water to submerge Megahab in and begin Megahab testing. I really can't do that on the cur current amount of funding. I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful for my Patreon income. It lets me pay my health insurance, which I finally got to see the doctor recently about my respiratory issues and post-nasal drip. For the first time in 10 years, uh, I, ha I had a filling come out of one of my teeth recently. I'm going to have to go to the doctor. I can only really pay, I mean the dentist, I'm only going to be able to pay him because of Patreon income. I can insure my cat. My cat has health insurance. Which I, I wish Jenny had. I don't know how much difference that would have made. She was 15 years old. I can pay my car insurance. Uh, I can eat. I, mean, I pay all my bills with Patreon. It, it's just enough, just enough for that. Plus about 200 and something dollars a month for food. I just need it. I need this project to blow up a little bit more so I can take it to the next level, which requires a fairly steep increase. I didn't really plan going into this for the project to make it this far. So I didn't think about how much more expensive it is to, to do larger habitats than the small aquarium sized ones. For now though, just gonna rejoice in the small victories. The hamster is back underwater choosing the impossible and all of my fans are along once again for the journey. So, I made a super hat I decided that if I was going to wear something on my head, it might as well do a bunch of useful things for me. Uh, there was not one hat on the market that had all these features, though. I had to cannibalize uh, two hats and then add a, a third piece. You'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, I'll bring up a picture on screen now of the Synapse. That is a hat which has Bluetooth bone conduction audio and LED lights, which is this part. I really wish it just turned on and off. And uh, this hat has the solar panels from which you can conceivably charge things. I've not yet been able to get it so the solar panels charge this part, which is where the electronics for the audio and the lights are. Because the port is on here, and that, that would the cord would have to go through my forehead. So I, I'm still working on how to get a cable from here discreetly to here, such that this thing will charge itself all the time while I'm outside. It's rigid. The solar panels are rigid, um, which is a good thing. F flexible, thin film solar panels die quickly. And about five years, the plastic uh, coating clouds up just because of chemical reactions that occur in any plastic when sunlight hits it because of the UV. So you're better off with rigid panels and um, this has them, has the light feature, it has the Bluetooth, there's the transducer. These things set up against your skull, much in the same way my implant works, but the audio quality is better. I, I don't like to wear that thing lately. I also added this, this is the third part I talked about, which is a bump cap. It's an insert for baseball caps that gives you some of the protections of a hard hat. You wouldn't really want to rely on it for anything serious, but falling rocks, um, just bumping your head on the door frames or whatever. It's better having it than not having it. It's actually much less obtrusive than I thought it would be. You can get these for any hat, and uh, it's. It, I thought it would stand out. It would... It would uh, it fills out the cap, but it looks like that anyway when it's on your head. I also thought it would be uncomfortable. It's really not uncomfortable. It slips in there. Uh, you can't really tell it's there except that the hat is rigid. It feels fine, and uh, this is about everything I can imagine putting into a hat that would be remotely useful. I guess maybe a radio? 
Although that's in my phone already, and it already streams from my phone. I can't really think... Like, maybe one of those hats that has beer holders on the side with a straw, maybe, like, dual bongs or something. I can't really think... It. Maybe, like, smart glasses that fold down from the bill. Um, I was wearing this when I was uh, hiking with a buddy recently, and I was, I was like, hang on, I've got to turn my hat on. And he, he doubled over laughing, and I didn't get the joke. Until I like, I tried to think about it from his perspective, which is difficult for me. But I, I, when he explained to me that that's not a normal thing, that people normally don't have to turn articles of clothing on or off, it made me reflect on what a strange person I actually am, and, and that I'm usually not aware of it. Sometimes I have these moments of sudden realization where I can see myself the way a, a regular person does for like two or three seconds. And I'm like, what the hell? Why? Why Why am I like this? Underwater hamsters, the diving helmet, the car fort, the cooling vest, the super, super fucking super hat, electric heated clo clothing. Why? Why don't I just get like regular goose down winter clothing? Why don't I just wear a regular fucking baseball cap and have like, Headphones. Why am I like this? Why am I like this? Why do I take everything and have to like upgrade it and upgrade it and upgrade it and optimize it and, and make it like high tech and and I don't really have an answer for that. I don't understand myself that well. Um but it was really interesting to have that realization and, and see it reflected in in somebody else. Because at the time, I was also wearing my electric-heated electric pants and jacket because the sun had gone down. And later, I said, I have to turn my, my pants off. And he said, you know, there, there you go again. And it really drove the point home. I'm a strange man in many ways. And I, I don't know why I'm like that except, except the autism and the obvious reasons. But that is a weirdly specific way to be. I just have to make everything, like... Super. I guess if you have the choice of regular or super, why would you not choose super? But anyway, it probably also has something to do with my giant melon head, which is why I had to make the strap extended like this. But, um, having this hang off the back has not so far attracted any comments or stares. I may just remove that since I'm, I don't really use it. And this is a, a 1.1 watt panel, which is fuck all in the way of power. It's just barely useful for charging a phone that's turned off. I'm going to continue thinking of things I can add to this, just because if I'm going to wear something on my head, I may as well... It's game loose again. I need to... I need to. I think I'm going to, instead of relying on the clip, I'm going to super glue that to the bump cap now that I have a rigid plastic surface. Thinking of what else I could add to the hat, I can't... Nothing jumps out at me, but if you have any ideas on what would be useful from a wearables standpoint, wearable technology standpoint, in a hat, get at me in the comments, because I think... Uh, I have this suspicion that hats are going to be the next big um, area of growth for wearable technology. They've been sort of ignored until now. We got the wrist, we got the smart watches, we got smart glasses. I really think the hats are the next thing. This thing would have much more justification to exist, I think, if I had smart glasses like the Vuzix Blade or something, because then I could use this thing, the hat, to charge the glasses. Because glasses have a terribly short battery life. Many common sense things do not occur to me, otherwise I never would have made something like this. But at this part on the Synapse hat usually has these wings just to follow the contours of the build that are really pointless. There's no electronics in those parts and they're very flimsy at this hinged spot anyway so they can curve. So like cutting those off even just with scissors and getting a clean line was not actually that difficult at all. And then um, there's cardboard or something, some kind of material, in between the bottom of the bill and the solar panel. I don't know if you can see. See? So there's something to screw this thing into. It just it just goes in with sharp, pointed screws. Same, same on this hat as it does in the Synapse. So installation was much easier and more straightforward than I thought it would be. Then I just had to run the wire from here up through a hole I poked in this rim through here and I used some double-sided adhesive um 
to adhere the rim to the hat just to keep the, the cable underneath it lined neatly into here and then over on the other side to the other transducer. Although I have only one good inner ear, so having two of these is probably a waste. Does it work well? Is the audio quality good? Yes, surprisingly so. Well, yes and no. If you're expecting the same fidelity as earbuds, which are directly in your ear, you're going to be disappointed. As someone who has used the audio built into my implant, and it's it's been very quiet, and if it goes above a certain decibel level and it starts to crackle, this is an improvement over that, shockingly, um, considering this is not directly attached to my skull. This has more power to work with, though. My implant device works off of a little hearing aid battery. This one works off of a lithium polymer pouch cell that's in here. So these have more power to blast it into your skull. It works better, obviously, if you have short hair. If you've just gotten a haircut, these will sound better. There's still a limit. They can only get so loud before it vibrates too much and it just starts to shake itself. And it starts to crackle like, like a poor radio reception. So you have to keep the volume down. And in which case, if you're in a really loud area, you're not going to be able to hear the music very well unless you put your fingers in your ears. I only have to do that with one ear since I only have one good ear in the first place. I look like a Secret Service guy that like talking to like Shadow Obama or whatever from the Shadow government. Um, so yeah, audio quality is surprisingly good if you keep the volume to a reasonable level and also you realize that the point of these, of Bone Connection Audio, is to have your ears open. So you can have a conversation. You can hear what's going on around you. But in, in in still moments, when thing not a lot of is happening to make noise around you, you can also hear the music. So that's that's the compromise. You're, you're not going to be able to li to listen to music very effectively in a in a crowded, noisy environment. But when it's not noisy, you can hear the music fine, and your ears are open, so you can talk to someone. So you can order your sandwich at the cafe or whatever, and you don't have to take your earbuds out. So that's the super hat. Why did I make this thing? Even I don't know. Perhaps you remember my solar-powered cooling vest. If so, you'll recall that it cools water by circulating it through an insulated thermos containing ice and water, water being the working fluid. That works okay for about 20 minutes. The ice melts much too quickly, even though I insulated uh, the chamber. I took as many precautions as I could to prevent radiant heat loss, but it still just melts much too quickly. It works well apart from that. I just need a way to keep the water cool for longer. So enter the thermoelectric cooler, which will hook up to the same tubes that the ice water reservoir does. One goes in, the other goes out. I don't think it makes a difference which direction. This is the thermocouple. It's the same element that you will find in many 12 volt travel coolers, a uh, simple Peltier junction. You put power into it and one side gets hot and the other side gets cold because what it's doing is it's moving heat from one side to the other. So you can see how with a very well insulated container, despite the fact that these things are at, at most 5% efficient, you could still do a lot of useful cooling for a reasonably low amount of power. They work in the other direction too, like any semiconductor, they're reversible to some degree. So you can actually apply heat to one side and remove it from the other and generate power. That's not what we will be doing for this application though. We will have to drive these two fans. I still need a PCB that will allow me to plug these into a USB power source because this is ideally going to be running off my backpack. Um, and then we have to solder these to this guy. It's a standard DC barrel plug. I, I chose this because it'll fit all the adapters I have, and it already natively fits the backpack battery, which can optionally output 12 volts. I don't know if it'll output enough, like as much as this wants, but the amount that it is, since it's DC, it shouldn't matter. It's not going to uh, cause any problems. It'll just use as much power as, as I send to it, basically. Um, this is, I think, an up to 80 watt chiller. It's advertised as being like 90 or 100 or something, but the comments all say that when they tested it, that it was consuming about 80 watts. Which is about what my backpack battery over here will put out. So I'm hoping running it right at the limit like that won't cause any problems, but that'll be a nice compact uh, all-in-one solution to just be able to plug 
my vest into my backpack and have it solar charge while it's running the cooler. And this will just hang off my hip like a big ugly tumor. Uh, right next to the other one I don't talk about. Uh, that I occasionally have to feed ramen to keep it alive and, and poke it with a stick just to keep it in line. Um, I'm hoping this works as well as I imagine. I've seen versions of this as a engineering thesis project. Uh, basically the same concept it is sold today to supervisors and COs in Iraq. Uh, it's Their version of it is more heavy duty. I think it might use a legit refrigerant pump because it's like a suitcase that you have to hook your vest into and it will plug into a Humvee so that apparently they don't have air conditioning in those or do they? At any rate, uh, it's not super portable. Not every grunt gets one because it isn't really practical. It's mostly so that the guys who don't have to do the running around and the shooting um, and just do just fucking supervise and, and write shit on clipboards uh, all day can uh, escape some of the miserable ball sweltering heat out there. Cat, do not, cat, do not get in there. Cat, I love you, but do not get in there. Do not climb into the habitat. It's not for you. It's for hamsters. So I need to add a power inlet to plug all this electronic shit into. Cat, what did I tell you? The one thing I told you not to do. You know, what if I close this on you, huh? What are you going to do now, huh? What the fuck are you going to do now? Was that part of your plan? Watch her peek up through the dome. What now, smart guy? There she is. It's the idiot box. What does that make you? Come on, get out of there. Anyway, I need to come in through the corner, I believe. That's the only part of the ceiling which is not used up by electronics currently. It's not going to be terribly pretty, but I can't come in near the bottom where the power is going to come out from the... The power cable comes out from the heating pad because uh, then I would have to have USB cables coming from the bottom floor up to the ceiling, which would expose them to being chewed by the hamster. So as ugly as it is, and as much as I don't want to do it, I'm going to have to have two umbilicals, or I'm going to have to have the two umbilicals join at some point. I'm going to have to have one power umbilical and air umbilical coming from the bottom, near the bottom of the habitat shell in the back, and then I'm going to have to have another one for power for the lights and the camera and data coming out of here. I'm not super happy with it, but you don't want to fuck around when it comes to giving hamsters cables that they can chew. Bet you don't hang around when I turn this thing on. That's what I thought. Scary drill, scary drill. Would you please listen to me for once in your life and not... not no, don't do that. No, don't do that. Get it. Get I can't, I don't think I can do this on camera. Let me try to, because I need to have enough room for the lip, because this thing has a lip, you'll see what I mean. Did that work? Hmm. That might be a little too close. I guess we'll find out. I can't exactly undo it now anyways. So let's thread the umbilical through. As you can see, it's got a plug on this end for, for two USB cables. I, I chose a double cable umbilical because I'm having trouble getting enough power to hand bunker um, where I have... A light and a camera on every individual cord, which is apparently just barely too, not enough, or too much, rather. So I'm going to have 
one for just the lights, which should be enough when it's charging, when it's it's like a maintenance charge. If they're fully charged, it shouldn't draw too much. And one just for the camera, which I think will solve the issue. Now we find out if this fits in the hole or not. Uh, I might have fucked this up. Uh, see, there's a lip on this thing, and it's pretty wide. I should have drilled this more this way. Uh, this has a little rise here, in just the way that plastic is injection molded. And this, there's not enough room for this lip on this side of it. I can probably solve that by cutting or dremeling down a little piece of this part or I can just put a very thick o-ring on here or silica gel it's probably salvageable I don't think I've ruined the cat cat no g give me give it that's mine why do I care for an animal whose only job is to constantly fuck with whatever I'm trying to do and make it harder for me to do it I don't know it's a mystery even to me I love that little gremlin though. So, if I can get this on here, right? This is how it's supposed to to attach. Here we go. At least in theory. And it kind of works, it just overlaps the the edge here, you see? And that's not ideal. It just barely did it wrong. There's enough room on this side. Now on this side, I'm going to need to dremel that down so it's flat. Otherwise, this won't be able to make a watertight seal. Other than that, this is how it's going to look coming out of the habitat. It didn't go perfectly. It never quite does, but I've, I've managed to solve most of my fuck-ups so far and continue building this thing. Um, the question is where I'm going to put this. I keep working on this because you guys want to see progress made on it. Um, it's basically done now it just needs the heater pad and the air umbilical and then i have nowhere to put it i don't have a pool i ha don't have a pond deep enough in the backyard i have a little ornamental one um i didn't think of this when i started the project because i didn't think i would make it this far um and i'm not really sure what to do about that i can do other projects i can like my little inventions the various gadgets i make i can work on skyhab uh, i can fix up hand bunker which i plan to do anyway i just don't know how much further i can take the underwater portion of the project because i didn't really think further than building something that would fit into an aquarium and really in order to continue this project the way it deserves to be continued, I would need to live by a lake or pond or something, like within easy range for like a extension cord or something, so I could run enough grid power with the UPS, ideally. And I don't have have that living situation, sadly. I would need like a cabin or something, which is assuming way too much from a silly underwater hamster project. Like, I don't think I can get there from where I am now. I'm working on it. I mean, I have various pokers in the fire. I have my uh, Chinese translations of ebooks underway for sale in that market. I have um, the ear of a curator for major publishers that I'm, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping I can actually get my career started as a horror author and get some real money coming in that I can use to c carry on this project. To its logical conclusion, I've got the children's book I'm working on, stuff I talked about during the last video. And if any of that pans out, as well as my crypto investments, then I can really take this project. Could you not? This cat loves to fuck with this tripod for some reason. I think she senses it's important to me. Anything important to me, she destroys. You should see what she's done to my computer chair. But um, that's where the project's at right now. That's why I haven't made a, a huge amount of progress on it. I'm probably going to dremel that corner down by the next video and this should be just fine i'm probably just overreacting then we'll have electrical power and data to the habitat and at least in theory if i had a body of water deep enough to submerge this and do this thing would be ready to go i could put hamsters in it and submerge it then i could just replicate this thing a couple of times uh, for however many air air compressors i wanted to buy and I could have a large colony with nice, spacious modules like we have always dreamed of. What a strange thing to dream of. And once again, what a strange man I am. But I assume that's why you come here and watch these videos. There, I believe that's the final wiring. This thing 
needs to be adhered to the roof with some double-sided adhesive. Everything else pretty much sits flush. I'm going to maybe get some sticky tack for different parts of the wire. Other than that though, everything looks good. These now run off of their own plug and this runs off of a different plug so this should not have the same problem Handbunker did but I'm going to test it. Um, but for now though, it's looking good. I'm feeling pretty good about the electrical side of this project. That's all for this time. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, I'm streaming regularly again now. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. West Coast time.